beautiful song is by Daddy Owen, a.k.a. Papa Fololo, a.k.a. Le Grand Mopao, Jemo Colomba, uh, together with the... Uh, Anaito Anani, Anaito Regan Sarkozy. I'm, I'm trying to uh, really get his uh, a.k.a. I'm sure it's a very strong... Congolese, but it's a beautiful song. The song is known as uh, Wewe Ni Mungu, uh, right here on Tukuza. Welcome to church. It's good to have you, and it's a blessing. We had an amazing uh, Sunday school earlier on, and uh, what a powerful story by that, that young, small boy. And uh, a guy called uh, Bakari. Bakari is an amazing producer. And Bakari has just called me and told me he knows that boy. And he remembers the story. He remember, remembers uh, seeing that boy walking and he's so glad that uh, God has done something. And I, may, I, I mean, Bakari has produced beautiful songs. Uh, today we'll be playing another one, which he just produced a new one. And Bakari said that Theophilus has done a beautiful song. And Bakari has said he wants to sponsor him to do a video for that song. So that's a blessing. Thank you very much, Bakari for offering to do that. Videos are very expensive, by the way. Sadiq? Videos are expensive. So if you see someone willing to do that, it's a blessing. And uh, Bakari, thank you for accepting to be used of God to, you know, to help Theophilus and the children to do an amazing video. God bless you. Uh, <laughs> you're already... <laughs> Sadiq is already thinking, oh my goodness. Uh, I didn't think it would come that fast. No, I didn't. <laughs> Sarah, karibu sana again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for having uh, me. And good to have you. Yeah. Oh my, today is going to be one of those days, eh? One of those days. <laughs> I hope I can just, you know, hold myself together. You will hold yourself yeah. to the very end. Mm. So we will go straight away. Bakari, unaona sasa umeanza kufanya watu wanalia kwa set, bana. We are not taking a break, eh? We need to do this to the very end. So Sarah, we'll, we'll allow you to introduce yourself again. And I will start from your beginnings. Tell us about your beginnings and your tough beginnings yeah. as you keep building your story. <clears throat> okay, my name is Sarah Hillman. And um, for those who know me in the younger age, my name was Sarah Maingi. Mm -hmm. That's my maiden name. All right. Uh, so I just want to say thank you very much for having me here today and the children. Such a blessing, such a blessing. I just really want to... Um, share my story mm -hmm. and not because um, it's a nice story to share right but it's more of I would like to be um, a testimony to a lot of women out there right and also for just people who just don't believe that there could be a better tomorrow mm -hmm. so my story starts from a very good uh, upbringing from my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Maingay. Right. I thank God for them and God rest their souls in peace. Mm -hmm. They were there for us. They gave us the best, best education. We had everything the best. Right. But I can remember just growing up and having so much love, you know, for the children and mothers. So I used to have every Easter and Christmas, I used to make sure they come home mm -hmm. and they're cooked for. We used to boil eggs. You know, in England now it's all about chocolate eggs. Right. Even here, I suppose. <laughs> Those things are changing, the, eh? Things are really changing. <laughs> right. Those days it was the real eggs. Ah. You boil the real eggs, put a little bit of color, yes. hide them, and then we go find them. The children find them. Right. And we get lots of salt, peel them, have a lot of fun. Uh -huh. It's Easter time. <laughs> right. So... We had lots of those sort of things, Easter mm. time, Christmas. So your parents, uh, Sarah, were well off? Yes, I thank God. I, I mean, you had a beautiful upbringing. I thank God. As you grew up. Yes, Went I to thank the, God. Uh, the best of schools. Yes, I did. Had a good time. Mm -hmm. Spoke good English. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> All you. right. Thank you very much. So growing um, up, I mean, after having all that, uh, where did issues start, uh, you know, now getting deeper and uh, mm. affecting you from that very good background? So from the good background, we all, I mean, as growing up, you're always thinking about your future and yes. you want to settle down at some point and, you know, yeah, have children and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a nice friend and I, he was a very good person initially. Um, and then after that, just things started changing. So right. even before I actually got married, things were already, I could already see there was issues. Mm -hmm. But then what do we do today? Right. It happens with everybody. You just think it's going to change. Yeah. I mean, so, this is going to be different. Yeah, it's so going to change. Say, let, me, let me just, let me just let hang me in there. Going. Let me hang so in I there. So wow. I kept going. 
And I can remember um, uh, having myself pushed down the stairs and breaking my leg as a so, first sort of shock. So, so all this time as you, uh, I mean, start living with this man, mm -hmm. what was the very first sign mm -hmm. for you to realize that, apart from you know, being pushed down the stairs, mm -hmm. when did you start realizing that this is not a healthy relationship? I, I noticed it. I could see it. Right. It's literally, you're almost seeing you know, barriers mm. in, you know, ahead of you, and you yourself remove those barriers. And we all do that. Right. Especially us women, we all do that. Mm -hmm. You just imagine, oh yeah, it's gonna get better. So you're literally seeing barriers and you're just thinking, No, I'm gonna go through that. Right. I'm gonna go. So I saw little signs because initially we were so, we were friends for so many years mm -hmm. and he was fantastic. But then what happens? A woman rides on. Ah. And as soon as a woman rides on, that's when literally hell broke loose. Breaks loose. Wow. So he doesn't even know what he was doing. And that's why I don't completely, uh, okay, for having that affair made things go horribly wrong. Right. But if he hadn't, I don't believe that you'd have done what he did to me. Uh -huh. yeah. So this very first time he pushes you down the stairs. It was literally because he's having an affair and he's trying to battle, you know, I've got to be here, I've got to be there. Uh -huh. You know, I want him here and she wants him there. It's, wow. it's difficult. And not every man can tackle the sort of... Uh, true. You know, some people Very can, oh, yeah. but some others can't. Right. But I'll be honest with you, as far as I'm concerned, whichever way you try it, you'll fail one day. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> That's the truth. I hear you on that. <laughs> so, so, so he pushes you, you break your leg, and you realize this is yeah, dangerous. But I, I, I remember going for my, one of the meetings for, because um, we had a Ngorario and I had to go for the meeting. Right. And I remember literally going for it with my plaster. Oh my. And I'm asking myself, should I, should I not? Ah. And something's telling me, just go ahead. And I already had my firstborn child at that point. All right. So you're just imagining it's just gonna, it's gonna mm. be well. Yeah. And you're thinking of course about your, ch your child. You're saying, yes, you know, definitely. Because I already have a child, yeah. I'm here to stay. Exactly, and she needs to have so, a father. So do people and... ask you and uh, what happened to your leg? Uh, yeah, of... I tripped and fell down the stairs. We you all give a story, tell don't we? Mm. We never. We're always in denial. Right. Just that's the way it is. So eventually you go for this ruratio. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> and God, I don't want to sort of like go back and remember all the negative things, but right. I went through it. And then after that, we literally started, you know, yeah, living together permanently. Right. And I had my twin boys after that. Uh -huh. And uh, I, no, before I had the twin boys, I was expecting them. I had another, you know, Incident. held breaking loose, I almost lost the twins, wow. literally. Because of the lost violence, them. right? Yeah. And the abuse. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. And then it went on and I kept, kept telling myself, you know, I can't tell my parents about it. Because if my father knew about it, he would have got me out of there, right. literally, right. immediately. But so you're dying inside to, yourself. Yeah, you're not sharing dying. this with anyone. No, I kept telling myself, just try and make it work. Mm -hmm. And all this time, as you're trying to make it work, you always, you, you seem to be more and more submissive and finding yourself taking all, even if it's mm, not wrong, right. you're wrong. You're just receiving, you're just, receiving. Yeah, and you just, you, you're almost like saying, sorry, so, forgive me. Oh. And you haven't done anything wrong. Someone hits you and you yeah, say, sorry for hitting say, me. Please, yeah, just, I won't do it again. I won't, I won't ever answer you. Wow. I will never. That's a so desperate it, it, it place was, to it be was, in. You know, it was quite bad. Mm -hmm. you know, and I was being reminded, you know, that, you know, I'm the man of the house. Hey, All right. there was no argument about that. You are the man, but, you know, it's just constantly and mm -hmm. it was blows. So, so it whatever. actually kept getting worse. Oh, yeah. It just got worse. By the day. Yeah. And I remember running back home mm -hmm. and uh, bless my mom because she'd always tell me, look, if it's not working out, just come back home. Right. I wouldn't even tell my dad about it because I knew who just get me back home. All right. But my mom would tell me, if you, it's not working, just come back home. And I kept saying, no, I'll give it one more try. Mm -hmm. And I would go back again. It's the same old story. I'm sorry. You know, oh. I didn't mean to hit you. Right. And it's, you know, I'm going to stop it. So um, forgive me. And what are we told? Forgive. So mm. I kept forgiving and forgiving and forgiving. And you were hurting. Oh, and so bad. Even so bad. More. I didn't even understand myself. Mm. I'd wake up in the morning in the same clothes. I didn't even understand what showering was all about. Right. You know, I would stay in my night clothes the whole day. You know, I wouldn't understand what the world is all about. Mm. For me, life was just. And I kept asking God, funny enough, 
Why am I in this situation? You know, I got married. I'm being a faithful wife. I'm doing, why am I in this situation? Just get me out of here or kill me. Let me just die. I kept feeling, I don't need horrible. this. I don't, uh, it was a horrible feeling. Mm -hmm. When I think about it now, I just sit back and I say, oh, oh. my God. I mean, so we, we, had a, we had a lady here a few, a few, a few months ago, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And she was sharing the same story. She mm -hmm. was in an abusive marriage for a long time. And she got to a point, she said, you know what? I will die here. Yeah. And I'm sure there are ladies out there who are going through this. And they're in such an abusive uh, marriages and yeah. situations. What do you tell them, Sarah? One thing I want to say to, to them, which mm. is you've got to just um, believe this, right. is that when it's been happening for so long, it's not going to change right. unless a miracle happens. Maybe this guy completely throws himself before God mm. and just says, God, forgive me. And you can see, because if, if, he's, if he's honest right. within his heart, you will see that he's actually honest, honestly saying, I have changed. All right. But otherwise, those who have just been told, you know, sorry, eh, I didn't mean it. And a lot of times men behave like I, they didn't even know they did it. Mm -hmm. That's the worst. We need to move. Mm. So, so, so at what point did you decide, I'm out of this? Oh, God, I can remember. Right. I, had a th my, I lost my mother. And after oh. I lost my mom, it was, um, I remember uh, him coming home that night when I was still mourning my mom's death. In fact, I think we had just buried her. Yep. And then I was literally mourning my mother's death. Mm -hmm. After the funeral, a day after or so, he comes home and he just decides to literally beat me up. I mean, he was using... The wooden spoon, and he was all, you know, he asked for the food. Right. Just, you know, the microwave, okay, fine. I got up, got the heated up for him, gave it to him. And after that, it was just hell. You know, who do you think you are? Do you know I'm the man of the house? And ah, I'm thinking, mm. I, I, I didn't answer. Why aren't you not answering? You open your mouth and answer. Wow. You're given, what are you ah! saying? Uh, I was beaten much. on that night until I thought, no. no. I'm going to much. kill this man. Seriously. Wow. I decided I'm going to kill this guy. So he went off to bed. He was drunk. I went in the cupboard, got a knife, and I was going to kill him. And I walked literally up to the bed with that knife. And it was a nice, huge knife. knife. I was just going to stab him and make sure he's dead. But a voice spoke to me and said, don't. Wow. That is what saved me. And, and that, him. And here I am today. Because you know, well, at that point, I didn't care whether it saved him. But mm. thank God he was saved. Right. But I really wanted just to make sure he was gone. But then something just told me don't. And I remember talking to the voice and saying, why shouldn't I? And, I, and it was, you know, this will ruin your life, mm, your children's entirely. life. Yeah. So I remember taking that knife, going back to the cupboard where I got it from, and I threw it in the cupboard and I said, well, if, you're, if, I, if you do want me to kill this person, get me out of here. And the voice said, I will. Holy Follow right there. So, <laughs> so this is Sarah wants to kill the husband. It's too much for her. Yeah. And the voice says, I will. So we'll, when we come back, we'll want to understand how did she leave that particular house? And then was it a new beginning? Was it a better beginning? Did things get better or they go worse for her? Remember, she has lost her mother, source of hope. So when we come back, we'll be uh, continuing with her story. Beautiful, amazing story. And we believe that this is going to really inspire you right here on Tukuza. My name is Anastasia Mukabu, a beautiful songwriter. It's known as Ume Tenda Majab. And, you know, just here, uh, listening to Sarah's story, I mean, God has indeed done so much for her. She's amazed at what the Lord has been able to do to her. And uh, I believe also in your life he has done. And if he has not done, he's going to do it. Because if he did it for her, he will do it for you as well. Just sharing a story, you know, um, coming from a well-to-do family, you know, getting the best of uh, education and whatever she needed, getting to this place where she's in an abusive marriage. One, she says, I mean, she saw small things, but she assumed. Later on, growing, uh, you know, pushed down the stairs, going to Harurasu with this plaster and saying, no, 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 I just tripped and... Uh, this is what happened. And now eventually um, getting to a point where she's pushed the wall. She wants to kill this man. But a voice tells her, do not do this. This will ruin your life entirely. And so she decides, you know what? I'm not going to do this. But the same voice tells, tells her, I will help you out of this. So Sarah, here you are. The same voice says you're very angry. Mm. You're out of control. Says, I will. 
So did it, did, did whatever voice that was, yeah. were you helped to get out of that marriage? <sighs> that was God's voice for sure. Right. And um, literally the following day, I had my own sister-in-laws. All right. So your sister-in-laws yeah. actually came? Literally, it was like we had to hide because oh, if you knew right. I was going to leave the place, it would have been a disaster. Right. So I was thrown in the back of a pickup mm -hmm. with the kids and they were just nappies and the bottles. This time you had four kids, right? I had four kids at this point. Wow. And all of them were like this. Yeah, so I was thrown in the back of the pickup and literally I was the one left behind mm -hmm. to show that I'm still in the house because he was in the house. And then I just knew at this point, it's time to get out. So I ran, it was like a movie. I ran and jumped in the back of the pickup and we took off. And that was the beginning of my new life. Not to say that after leaving that home, um, it was all good. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. I just went from bad to worse. You know, if I sort of like, yeah, bad to worse, but better because right. I wasn't to... in that abusive marriage anymore. That's right. Because I can remember I had all the lovely food in the house, mm -hmm. and I never appreciated it. Then I went out, I was literally looking for vegetables, you know, back of the garden, growing wild. Right. And I remember I would make some ugali and eat that food, and I would enjoy it like I was eating a meal in Intercontinental or wherever, you know? Because you had a lot of peace. Peace. So where did you go to? Did you I rent had a, a house? I thank God for a very good friend of, uh, friend of ours, Victor Kamau. Mm -hmm. He's actually a blind guy right. and uh, uh, a lawyer and a good family friend. He just said, Sarah, come, mm -hmm. I'll give you some refuge. So I was there for a little bit. Then after that, he helped me get my own place. Right. And that's when I struggled on. And um, through the, I mean, of course, there was a lot of struggle because I can remember going to try and, you know, buy a, two pairs of shoes from Kikomba. Wow. And I would walk from Pangani all the way to Kikomba, buy two pairs of shoes. Then I would walk around in town with those two pairs, looking for people that, you know, I know as old friends, right. would help me buy at least a pair to give me something to, to be able to feed the children. So it was tough. What, were your tough. children going to school at this time? Um, uh, no, at this point they weren't going to school. All right. I couldn't afford anything. Uh -huh. I couldn't even... So I for you even... it was, just to get a meal for that yeah, day. Yeah, it was bad. And I mean, so how long did that go on for? Um, it went on for some, you know, some years, then a few years. Then after that, um, my ex-father-in-law gave me a property, of one of his, to, to put up something, which I did. But then I still had this ex, you know, woman who had actually broken my marriage right. come into the whole equation. She got people to try and con me. Wow. You know, she reported me to the police that I wanted to kill, you know, my ex-husband. Yes, and she, it was, she did a letter saying that, you know, like, like coming from me, saying I'm going to kill you, tell him I'm going to kill you. Wow. Yeah, I had to be called. It was actually forged. Yes. Coming from you. Yes. And it wow. was, she had used the houseboy to do that. Uh -huh. And at this point, she's moved into my house oh, with wow. all my furniture and everything. You can imagine, because I just moved out with nothing. So anyway, with all that, I had to be called to the police station. I remember writing 15 scripts of that, you know, so-called, yeah, mm. for them to prove that it's not me who wrote that letter. Then they found out it was her, but she had used the houseboy. Wow. Bribed her way through and nothing happened. But all these things were just different things that just just continued making my, my life hell, really. Uh -huh. mm. So for a number of years, it was a mess. It was a mess. Did this husband ever come back to look for you? No, he couldn't be bothered. He was in love with somebody else. Ah, he was in yeah. another relationship yeah. altogether. Yeah, So no, I didn't in matter. In fact, for him, it I, was... Yeah, take off sort of thing. And I had four kids. Come on. Wow. Who was interested in having four kids? But I'll tell you who is. So wow. I struggled, <laughs> I struggled. And then eventually I went to join my sister in the UK. All right. And I was, I had lost one of my sisters, so my other sister, so I'd mm. gone to wind Were up. your parents, I no, mean, at this your point, father? At this point, my mother died. Then soon after that, my your father, father died. died. And then I left wow. to join my sister in the UK mm. because I was winding up some things for my late sister who had died in the UK. Right. So winding up all those things, I found myself in the UK and then I can remember going to church and I used to literally cry ev from the minute I walk, start the day for the church. I would cry the whole way to the church and throughout the whole service. And this boy used to wonder, hey, this girl, yeah. come Africa, a woman over here is just crying. She cries every time she time. comes here. She's just crying. They try to talk to me. I can't even ex uh, express my, what, what I'm going through because I didn't know what I was going through. All I knew that I was hurting and I had kids to look after. And it was just all, it just looked all messy. Mm -hmm. I just felt I didn't really have any life. But thank God, you know, at some point I really got into God 
and just started giving my time to God, giving my time fasting and praying. And then this one good time, I just decided to fast for 40 days. Wow. While in the UK. While I was in the UK. What pushed you to fast for 40 days? Sometimes just have that hunger mm -hmm. just to hear from God. And you just need to deny yourself something. Right. To feel, hey God, yeah. I want to be right next to you. To connect more and deeper. Yeah. And I did. Wow. 40 days I fasted and prayed. And after that, I met my husband today. All right. Mr. Giles Hillman. Thank <laughs> God for him. He's, uh, he's um, of course, English. Yes. He's very English. All right. And very upper class. Thank God to that. How was I couldn't that? be going from one end to another end. I know. So God is so good. So, so before you even met uh, Mr. Who? Hillman. Mr. Hillman. Mm -hmm. Before you met Mr. Hillman, mm -hmm. how was the struggle? I mean, were you still uh, really struggling to get food for well, yourself? Well, when I was in the UK, because first I went to do, you know, my, my sister's issues. Then I decided maybe stay on a little bit. So I had my firstborn daughter. Right. Then I got my other children who came and joined me uh -huh. through the church. You know, they supported me and we brought the other children in. So it was a struggle, you know, right. trying to work. It's not like here, you can't have a maid, you can't yes. forget all that. It's crazy. So at, in the UK, you're just simply working your way through. Right. So it was working odd hours. I remember getting home sometimes. I'm trying to eat something. I'm falling asleep Please. before I finish. I've got dried hands with ugali on them. I know. And I'm, I don't understand myself. But I, you know, you just have to keep going, keep right. going. So I just kept going mm -hmm. until... Yeah, when I fasting and praying, I met Giles, mm -hmm. and after I met him, he actually adopted all my children officially. Wow. Yep. And he. Why? Why did Mr. Hillman like you? With all the children, I, four children. That what is the encounter like? Everybody seems to wonder <laughs> how come yes. you, especially in the UK, mm -hmm. a black woman with four kids, right? Yeah, and a man is liking you and wants to marry you right. and adopt your children. It's pretty unheard of. But then, hey, we serve a living God, <laughs> right. a mighty what God. What can't he do? What can't he do? Right. That is the thing. And if you actually believe that he's able to do above. Exceedingly, abundantly, much more than you hey, think. I used to aim below my belt right. and think, oh, I'm gonna, I'll only really yeah, get maybe a person, some maybe somebody like a taxi driver or something. Yeah. And God said, no. All the way. He said, no. So, 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 so this, I mean, this opened a totally new life in your Completely. life. Completely. Because I started off with just doing some food. I'm, 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 I like cooking. All right. And I started doing African food. Uh -huh. Just like a joke, cookie, cookie. And I remember telling my husband I wanted a mobile kitchen. And he was like, yeah, there she goes again. She wants something to play with. He just didn't take <laughs> me seriously because he just knows I like people. I like this. Right. But I did say to him that I have got a love for children and mothers. Uh -huh. So if we agree that I still have to support, you know, back home for things like that. And mm -hmm. he told me there's no problem. So I got a mobile kitchen, which actually became very popular. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know about my food. It was called the Africa Safari Kitchen. Right. Very popular. I held the best food in the biggest festival in the world. Oh, great. Glastonbury Festival. Yep, for three years continuously. Amazing. And then after that, God blessed me with another child, mm -hmm. with Mr. Hillman. And I was praying because it was such, it's been such a blessing. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I could ask is something that right. we can actually completely have that, con you know. But he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, be, he was happy with the four. But we've got the fifth one. All right. So we've got another little girl. All right. So another fifth five one. Five children. Great. All together. Wow. That's yeah. a blessing. Yeah. So, so I mean, you continue uh, preparing your food. You get into yeah. festivals. Things get better. Yes. Your children go to school. school. And then I decided what I love most is giving back. Wow. So I decided to open up this uh, Mama Pendo children's home. Right. Of where I was at that point doing it with my sister, Elizabeth Ngala from Kitui. And we started off struggle, struggles, until eventually we are where we are today. Mm -hmm. The numbers go up to 62. Children. Yeah. Full time. Full time. Feeding them, taking them to school. Literally, I, um, we were renting a property um, of which we, we, you know, we've got all the children in there. We've got all the, the manager, the matrons, the carers, cleaners, cooks, whatever. So we look after the children completely for everything. Mm -hmm. It's been a struggle. I, know. I won't lie to you that sometimes I can... I was having a sleepless night, night thinking, how am I going to get the next meal for these kids? Right. But God has always been available to provide for these children. Amazing. But I, you know, I remember I was talking about moving from Majengo because Majengo is a bit of in the slum sort of area right. and a lot of not very good behavior with some of the people around. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to move out. And the government actually... Gave you land. Uh, to, yeah, gave us, it was six, six acres of, of land. Oh, great. And <laughs> in the middle of nowhere... It a went private somebody within developer the same county comes and grabs it. Takes it away. 
So then we had to struggle, struggle. I've managed to get a few acres, which we've had to buy because I need to move the children out. Mm. And that's where we are now. And I'm hoping we can be able to, yeah, get them to another new place. Wow. And we also have uh, two nursery classes that we have, I'm giving them free education for the kids of around who want to go to Standard 1 but cannot go to Standard 1 because they need the preschool education. All right, so I'm right. pushing them with a the free education wow. to push them to Standard 1. So we have the nursery classes, two of them. Then we've got the orphanage, of which again is also a, you know, a mm -hmm. care centre because right. kids are brought in and out depending on you know, any you know, um, desperate you know, wow. situations. Okay. Yeah, so it's been, what can I say, it's, it's been a walk. Wow, yeah, but and that's God has very been faithful. fulfilling. Yeah. I mean, God hearing the story of the small boy who was yeah. speaking in Sunday school, yeah. it really encourages you to keep doing oh, this. Yeah, I mean, if I was to tell you some of the stories, this is some of it. I'm telling you, there's wow. been such, such stories. Such, such stories. Right. But you know, when it's given to me, I'm all away and I'm thinking, I've got to. Mm, so I just, yeah, God moving. somehow makes a way and we're able to make it happen for the children. Right. Mm. You are a counselor. Oh, I, I was. Oh, you was. Yeah, I was. Oh, you were, sorry. Yeah, I believe I was the. First Kenyan lady to be made a counselor in the UK. All right, how yeah. was that? Yeah, I mean the Guinness Book of Records, Kenyan Guinness Book of Records, oh, which is pretty good. Oh, great. Yeah, so God uh, gave me that. I remember campaigning that I was in <laughs> Kenya. I reminded myself as I was back home. Yeah. You no, know, vote for Sarah Hillman and, you know, and with the loud, and they're thinking, mm. Uh, but I won and by 80%. And you were voted in. 80%. The highest That's ever recorded. Light. Oh, great. Yeah, in, the, in Lib Democrats. So from there, I've just sort of like, yeah, worked my way slowly and my love still remains mm -hmm. for being there for, right. you know, others. And I found myself, you know, I was hosted recently by KTN. Right. With the baby <coughs> Jeremiah, mm -hmm. for, for those of you who remember. On JKL. Yeah. Wow. And that was just amazing because, oh, Kenyans, they you know, I love you. They they went I love all you. the way. Yes, amazing. all the way. We managed to raise the money. This poor child, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. was actually given a month to live but there was so much complication mm. after getting the money because we had to get the donor and then take them through all the checks that they have to get before they can be taken out of the country. Wow. And after all that, would you believe it? It wasn't to do the kidney. He had lost one kidney here in Kenya. They removed it. The other one was choking. He was literally given a month to live. Mm. We had to take about three months because we, all the tests had to take that long and they were so costly. So a lot of the money went to try and get the mm, other donor because there are few people who are tested. <clears throat> right. Getting to India, he was told it's nothing to do with the kidney. It's, it's the totally bladder. totally different. So here we are, we've taken the mother and the donor. And so all those expenses oh became unnecessary. So he's gone through anyways. He went to India the first time. He came back. He's gone back again. He has come back and he still has two more operations to, to go. He was even actually, he was misdiagnosed because it was not, the, it was not nothing to do with the kidney. Right. It was his bladder all this time. That's very so in sad. the process of the first operation, removing the first kidney, they punctured something mm. and just things became worse. And, and we believe that he will get better. No, he's, he's improving. Only right. that, of course, the expenses are so high. Yeah. I'm sure Kenyans will come to again, our aid again true. to make sure that we finish to the very end of his treatment right. so that at least he's complete. Now. But he's going to school now. Amazing. We thank God. Yeah. We need to wind up. Mm. Yours is an amazing story. Look at where you've come from and look at where God has put you literally. And you're giving back. That's a beauty. Yeah, Did you ever forgive your, your Oh, my very ex. Yeah. Ex it's something you've got to do. Mm -hmm. If you don't do it, it's worse than, it's worse than cancer. Right. Yeah. It chews you literally. Because mm -hmm. that crying I was doing, up and down, going to church and whatever, right. is because I had to get that healing mm -hmm. to be able to say, you know what? I've forgiven you. Right. And truly, I forgave him. And even today, we're able to talk. Wow. Yeah, if he needs my assistance, he knows I'll be there for him. Right. That's just a bygone. And we have to forgive. Yeah, hey, women out there, you've got to forgive, important. especially for us women. You have to forgive. Very To important. be able to move on. That's right. Very As we wind up, Sarah, and mm -hmm. that's your camera right there, mm -hmm. there, there are people who are going through a lot of issues today. Yeah. I mean, some of them are in marriage. The, the marriage is crumbling. It's, it's too much, yeah. you know, to carry. Yeah. Hopelessness. Yeah. And you, your story is, uh, yes, I was there. Today, I'm blessed. I have mm -hmm. five kids. I have a husband who's blessed. I am supporting lots of other kids. Mm -hmm. And my life is generally very fulfilled. Yeah. And I'm leaving my purpose today. I want you to encourage them and tell them, you know what? It's not the end. Yeah. There is something good that can still come out of you. Yeah. Well, here mm -hmm. I am. I'm a living testimony. I've gone through hell. I've been to hell and back. 
to make it, you know, really simple to you. But I just want to tell you, do not be discouraged. Because even though I went through it for many years, I still believed that there was the light at the end of the tunnel. So fight through. And even sometimes if it looks too bad, mm -hmm. just hang in there and know that God is such a faithful God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So just keep on, be sensible about it. Don't get a knife and try and kill anybody. <laughs> but believe and know that God is able to move you to the next level. And for me, I did. I struggled a lot. And many times I wished I was just dead. But you, because I hanged in there and just knew that God will see me through, he did eventually. And here I am today. And I thank God for the struggles I went through because those struggles have made me who I am today. I don't care about, you know, building properties and what make it. That's not my first priority. I want to be there for others. And that being there for others gives me that peace in my heart. Nothing matters to me like being there for somebody else. So for you, just hang in there, please. I know you could be in a situation where you're thinking, is it ever going to come to an end? It will. Have faith. Give back to God. That is the key point, mm -hmm. giving back. Don't imagine that I've got this, so it's all about you. It's not about you. You give back and you see what God is going to do in your life. But believe me, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. Lovely. Thank you so much. Oh. That's a beautiful story. God bless you. Thank you so and much. And we pray that he will continue, you know, growing you, expanding you even resources so that you can even be able to give much more yeah and be a blessing thank you and i hope that people are going to be out there to also support right. mama Pendo right. because it's not easy it's all right not easy. all right yeah we gave out the number so mm. if you're out there and you want to support this cause and you, and you know just say you know i also want to be a blessing to someone mm. we will put the numbers again on our social media handle so you can check it out and be a blessing to them support them it's and i love you queen's english oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> Thank really you. nice. God bless Thank you. you. Thank we you so much. we were taking a commercial break. We'll be back later on with Prophetess Noreen Gansan Suli. She'll be sharing together with us. And uh, later on with Eve Bahati on uh, the Samis Baraka.